musical prodigy, bass trombone superstar, composing genius, and traveling enthusiast. These are the four names that aptly describe who this child was. From picking up the flute to buying their all-time favorite Wrath R9, we explore the impactful life this musical superstar lived. In this video, we touch on the handful of ways they impacted and influenced the many musicians they came across during their life before a genetic disease took it at just the young age of 15. I'm Jack Burrows, and this is Malawi Lee McDonald. Before we get started, it's important I address a handful of questions you might have about Malawi. Who is Sean McDonald? What is up with using they to address someone who looks like a boy? And why the name Malawi of all things? When Malawi was born, they were assumed to be a boy, named Sean, and used he and him pronouns. Around the age of 12, they realized they were gender non-binary, neither male nor female. They chose the name Malawi to represent their non-binary nature. Malawi means fiery in the Chicheo language, the native language of the country, Malawi. Every morning, when the sun rises from the the east, the sun rays reflect on Lake Malawi, giving it a fiery look. Malawi liked the scenic imagery and the uniqueness of the name. If you come across someone in this video referring to Malawi as Sean, it's likely because that's how they were known at the time. Some people also remember Malawi better as Sean, despite the name change, but it's respectful to call a non-binary person by their chosen name, even if you're referring to them at a time before they changed their name. For that reason, we'll refer to them as Malawi throughout the video. Now that we have cleared up the confusion about Malawi's identity, we can start talking about their life. Malawi was born on March 12, 2003 in Hagerstown, Indiana. The youngest of three, their parents, Laura and John, met at Earlham College. The McDonald parents quickly realized their third child was going to be anything but ordinary. Mala learned to read and walk at a very young age, and worked tirelessly to master the skills of their older siblings so that they could participate in activities with them. The McDonald parents decided on an unusual type of schooling for their kids, radical unschooling. Homeschooling involves the kids doing school from home and the parents teaching the skills and setting their schedules. In radical unschooling, schooling, the kids still learn from home, but they're the ones who decide what to learn and set their own schedules. Most parents might think this is a recipe for disaster, leading their kids to become video game addicts. But with proper parental oversight, the learning opportunities for the kids are limitless. However, this doesn't mean kids don't make new friends like kids in usual school settings do. Since radical unschooling isn't too uncommon for many families across the state of Ohio, unschoolers, as they're generally referred to, set up many unschooler gatherings, as well as the coveted unschoolers water park gathering at the Kalahari Resort in Sandusky, Ohio. The McDonald parents took many opportunities like this for their kids to make new friends. Then add Malawi to the unschooling mix. In addition to Malawi learning how to do many things fast, they were a vegan, a passionate pacifist, and avoided restrictions just as much as they avoided restricting others. They quickly developed the habit of wearing the least clothing possible. This included not wearing socks and only wearing flip-flops when absolutely necessary. When they went bowling, for example, they needed to learn how to put socks on. Despite all the things that made the McDonald family and Malawi unique, they lived a fairly normal life for their first 10 years in Hagerstown, Indiana. Then at around the age of 10, the McDonald family moved to Yellow Springs, Ohio, a small town east of Dayton. Since the house in Yellow Springs came with many things the family didn't need, many things were sold including this air conditioner which was traded for a flute a friend had. But before Laura got the chance to sell the flute, Malawi's eyes lit up and put their hands on the flute and tried to figure out how to play it. This would mark the beginning of Mal's life-changing journey into music. Okay, so we're going to just record and see if this is Sean's first day. A recording on flute. You ready? Can you play a B? The I'm confused here. Can we the same B we've been doing. Just play a B as long as you can. Okay, let's have an A as long as you can. Well? Yes. Okay, and now a G as long as you can. Okay, thank you. you know, do you want to do anything else before I stop recording? Can I do the G that sure. I'm supposed to? Sure. Keep switching. This is Malawi seeing the potential for improvement, but despite that, Laura recalls that it took them several weeks before they became comfortable in playing flute. Thank you. 
After a few lessons from relatives, a vocal teacher referred Malawi to Yellow Springs High School flautist Meredith Rowe. After receiving an email from Laura asking if she could give a flute lesson to her child, she figured she could give a few simple pointers to a 10-year-old kid. Not only did Malawi not need simple pointers, they were asking questions she didn't know the answers to. This would have been grounds for Malawi to look for a better teacher, but despite this, they were still grateful to have her, according to Meredith. Malawi did not make me feel bad for not being able to answer a question right away. Mala was a pure heart and never harmed or bragged to any soul about their skills for any reason whatsoever. It didn't matter whether they were better or worse at something than someone else, they treated and valued all others the same, regardless of ability or anything else. In Mala's mind, I was a human being and that was all that mattered. While these words spoken by Meredith rung true to every musician Malawi encountered, Malawi never failed to surprise anyone with their rapidly growing musical skills. Throughout the course of the fall of 2013, they collected many more instruments and quickly learned the basics of each one. But since Malawi was unschooled, they were at a disadvantage. They weren't able to play in larger ensembles like kids in normal school settings do. This would have been grounds for Mala to attend music classes at a local middle school, but thanks to an up-and-coming music educator, that never became necessary. Let me introduce you to Dennis Farmer. After giving lessons in ensemble rehearsals to a family of nine homeschooled children, all of whom played instruments, Dennis saw the need for a group music program aimed at homeschoolers, and thus founded the Miami Valley Music Institute, or MVMI, in 2013. Malawa's first rehearsal with a large ensemble was with the beginning band and the MVMI near the end of October. Dennis also gives lessons to his students at their homes. When he gave lessons to Mala, he taught them how to play the tuba, bassoon, and how to repair saxophone pads. And when he gave them a lesson on the trombone, which Mala then had only been playing for four months, they were asking Dennis questions he didn't know the answers to, even though the trombone was his primary instrument. But just like last time, Mala was grateful to have Dennis, and did not use this opportunity to seek a teacher who did know the answers. So how did Malawi get to learn so many different instruments? Dennis has two answers. One, there was no pigeonholing into any single instrument, no being forced to focus on just one like most kids are. You just knew whatever instrument they were wanting to learn, they were going to figure it out. And two, saying no to any desire Mala had to learn was not in their parents' vocabulary. Or most of their mentors for that matter. Meanwhile, someone asked for more percussion players to play with the one and only Yellow Springs Community Band. Mala asked if they could try and they were welcomed into the group. While preparing for their first concert with the group on percussion, they also took the opportunity to practice the flute parts with Meredith, just to see if they could pull it off. Then, at their first concert with the community band on November 22nd, the director of the band, James Johnston, gave Mala permission to join the flutes for one simple song. <laughs> Then Mala stayed with the flute section for almost the entire concert before jumping back up to play their assigned percussion part. Just imagine having the courage to do that. December, Mala played their first concert with the MVMI. Unfortunately, we only have footage of their second concert with the group. And the last concert they played was with the Yellow Springs Community Band, where they played the slapstick part for Sleigh Ride. <laughs> to help you put everything in perspective, everything that happened between Malawi picking up the flute and playing the slapstick part for Sleigh Ride happened in just under six months. It is mind-blowing how fast this kid learned. Having first-hand experienced Malawi's unmatched quick musical learning skills, this is what Meredith recalled. There was no one you could compare Malawi with. 
They were so much themselves that there was no better word to describe them but Malawi. Malawi never appeared to care what anyone thought and was the truest to themselves as I ever saw someone be. Malawi was a peaceful old soul and I truly spent my time knowing them in admiring awe of the way they held themselves through life. <laughs> Welcome to our stage, Ohio Brass and Electric, featuring our young guest, Sean, on the saxophone. Without further ado, Ohio Brass and Electric. Yeah. As for the rest of 2014, to put it simply, they did a lot. Compared to 2013's 27 concerts attended and 6 concert performances, 2014 had them attending 114 concerts and 47 performances. This included many more concerts with the MVMI, Yellow Springs Community Band, and more. Malawi also kept their schedule busy by continuing to collect musical instruments of almost every kind, including making up instruments on their own. While they did play some instruments more than others, they equally valued all of them and refused to choose a favorite. Their strong desire to pursue playing every instrument did not distract them from playing numerous jams sessions with both of their parents.
But there is one instrument that I have not mentioned until now. It is now time to introduce you to Malawi's life with the bass trombone. Malawi first learned about the bass trombone when a cover article inside the Instrumentalist magazine featured it earlier in 2014. After wanting to get one of their own, their parents first told them that it was just way too big for an 11-year-old 5th grader to play. And their parents were right. It is generally advised that most trombone students don't even try to learn the bass trombone until they're in high school. The instrument is very heavy. Even the most experienced players often use ergonomic supports. Also, the instrument requires a lot of air to play well, and Mal's small size just wasn't going to cut it. So in Malawi did tons of research and read everything they could find about them. Eventually, they did get a bass trombone of their own. Like most instruments they collected, the bass trombone they got was nothing to brag about. Laura recalls that Malawi practiced tons every single day on the bass trombone. <laughs> as well as reading along with orchestral scores. They also took lessons from the bass trombonist of the Springfield Symphony, Denny Seyfried. Then August came around, and Malawi set the goal that in the next school calendar year, they play in a symphony orchestra. Their mother talked them down to being ready to play in a symphony orchestra. After all, Malawi didn't specify any instrument on which to achieve this goal. Congratulations to Mala for landing their first symphony gig. Surely it was going to be on something they were more experienced on, like the flute, right? You see, this is what I mean when I say Malawi is full of surprises, but you heard that correctly. Yes, Malawi defied all expectations and was able to get their first symphony gig on the bass trombone in the same year they played the regular trombone with the community band for the first time. How did they do this? Laura explains in this detailed Facebook post that Mala worked very hard to achieve this goal. Later in November, Malawi would finally realize all of their hard work by playing Felix Mendelssohn's second symphony, Loeb's Gang, with the Yellow Springs Community Orchestra. At the 2015 Ohio University Trombone Day, I offered a masterclass, but due to some miscommunication, many of the students didn't know in advance that they were expected to play. The students weren't performing particularly well, and there wasn't a lot of positive energy in the room. I remember Sean sitting with his horn out the entire time, and after all the older students who were interested had played, he came up. Certainly when we watched this little kid walk to the front of the room, no one expected much. He said he was going to play the row parts, and I was frankly annoyed. I genuinely liked the row parts and I was not looking forward to hearing it mangled. It's a relatively difficult piece, and few pre-collegiate students should even attempt it, let alone on bass trombone. 
Then Sean started playing, and I think he brought the whole session back. Despite being the youngest student in the room and choosing the hardest repertoire to play, he had the best performance of the hour. I think it was inspiring, or at least challenging, for the older students to witness this younger student showing such skill. I didn't work with him on musical ideas much at that time. I felt like he simply wasn't a large enough human to move enough air for the bass trombone he was using, and that was holding him back more than anything else. So we worked mostly on breathing and sound production concepts that I thought might grow with him and that he would be able to apply to the row parts and anything else he approached. As for the rest of 2015, to put it simply, they did a lot. Malawi continued to play with the Yellow Springs Community Band, Unschoolers Water Park Gathering, Friends Music Camp, and the Yellow Springs Chamber Orchestra for their first time. <laughs> Malawi also went on a trip to the East Coast where they got to attend a solo recital featuring the bass trombonist of the Met Opera, Denson Paul Pollard, in New York City. It was also during the year 2015, Malawi started their YouTube channel where they could share their bass trombone skills with the world. After having now gone to many different trombone shops by now, they realized their cheap bass trombone was holding them back from improving. So in September of 2015, they brought their favorite bass trombone, the professional grade Wrath R9. In Malawi's own words, it sounds exactly like I want it to and plays the way I want it to. The build quality of Roth traumas are among the greatest in the world. This, paired with the additional mechanical adjustments done to the horn, helped unlock Malawi's potential, allowing them to play amazing bass trauma and solo literature both at the Friends Music Camp Benefit Concert. <laughs> and then, just at the age of 12, winning a trauma and solo competition meant for high schoolers at Wright State University. <laughs> Malawi learned in 2015 how important it is to challenge yourself with musical opportunities meant for older, more advanced musicians. Sometimes they are what's necessary to push you further than most programs meant for middle school are. Malawi 
Kelly also enjoyed composing music. The two compositions that stand out the most in their short composing career are a bass trombone solo and an arrangement for an ensemble of bass trombones. The bass trombone solo they wrote was Trombophonics. Malawi asked a rising star of the bass trombone, Giuseppe Fu, to premiere this piece for them, which they did. <laughs> This video inspired Malawi to have a recording of their own, which they pulled off two months later. This video was among their most viewed videos on YouTube and garnered widespread positive reception by many trombonists around the world. Malawi learned that the biannual Dutch Bass Trombone Open in the Netherlands premiered new compositions written for the festival. Malawi wrote Bonio and Juliet for the group and was thrilled when it was accepted to be played at the 2016 Dutch Bass Trombone Open. Even though Malawi wasn't able to attend, a recording was saved by participants of the Open. The performance was conducted by the one and only world-renowned bass trombone legend Ben Van Dyke. <laughs> Now that we can officially close the book on 2015, we can turn the page and jump into what was likely their most memorable year alive, the year 2016. Gil envisioned that Mala would go to one of the top music schools of the country. In his over 30 years of teaching music history, he has never before seen anyone so young and so talented with such a bright future ahead of them. In March, they attended their first large trombone festival, the American Trombone Workshop, hosted annually by the U.S. Army Band in Washington, D.C. Malawi met many famous trombonists at this festival, including Zoltan Kiss, George Coran, Mick Rath, Max Tyne, Joseph Blaha, and many more. When they met Max Tyne, Malawi got to play a contrabass trombone 
for the first time. Stood upright, it was taller than Malawi. How freaking adorable. Later in March, Malawi had this iconic photo taken of them that best represents their life as a whole. They're holding their favorite bass trombone, barefoot, and included many different instruments in the photos since they were a multi-instrumentalist after all. Between the middle of April and the beginning of May, Mala went on a two-week-long trip overseas to Europe with their mother, Laura. Among the many places they visited, they visited the Rath headquarters in England, attended a dress rehearsal of the Rotterdam Philharmonic to meet Ben Van Dyke, toured the Tyne and Leitch brass shops in Bremen, Hubert Hensi's Alphorn shop in rural Germany, and Thoman Music House also in Germany. summer, Malawi played numerous performances of the musical Alice, although, at Antioch College's amphitheater in Yellow Springs. And last but not least, they played Mozart Requiem with the Yellow Springs Chamber Orchestra. Even though the coveted trombone solo is meant to be played by the tenor trombonist, Malawi did it on the bass trombone. <laughs> At this rate in 2017, one would expect Malawi to begin substituting for local professional orchestras, recording their album, start giving lessons, and maybe even give a masterclass at a local school. But none of those things happened. This was because they were dealing with unexplained health issues. Even though Mala was extremely healthy as a child, they started showing strange, unexplained symptoms in 2015. This included restricted breathing, rapid heartbeat, dizziness, and others. The family went to see many different specialists at Dayton Children's Hospital to figure out what was going on. While the doctors treated the symptoms, they couldn't give a diagnosis to explain what was going on. This went on for over a year. At the first signs of the symptoms, Mala was optimistic that they would get completely healthy again, but eventually they became too weak to play and even hold wind instruments and began became depressed. This is also the reason why they played percussion instead of bass trombone at their two concerts they played that year with the Yellow Springs Community Band. Fortunately, they developed other pursuits that didn't require the use of so much energy, including piano, folk instruments, experimenting with videography, listening to rap music, and continuing to explore the world. Those are some very expensive dog treats and some expensive soy sauce.
so as many of you will know, I have been having breathing problems for the last six months or so. And I've tried all different kinds of medications, and finally found one that worked after a lot of trying, um, which is a steroid. And I started taking that a few days ago, and I've noticed that the breathing problems have gone away, and I can play well again and use my full lung capacity. Um, but I've been noticing this interesting phenomenon happened um, once, and I'd like to know if there's any way to, to fix it, so if you have any advice, um, please give me some, but I caught it on video once to show you, so here you go. <laughs> As Mala hit puberty, when they were supposed to be growing up, their rib cage did the opposite and curved inward. This is called pectus excavatum, which gives your heart little room to beat. You could see their chest move with every heartbeat, so Mala needed NUS procedure to have steel rods implanted under the rib cage to force the ribs out. Even though their chest got fixed, they were still left with no explanation for the cause of the other symptoms that prevailed. It wouldn't be until near the end of 2017 when Laura got the answer she was looking for. One of Laura's friends, who experienced the same symptoms and explained to Laura the possible reason for what Mala was going through and suggested that they get evaluated for it. After the evaluation, the doctor confirmed her friend's suspicion. Mala had Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, or EDS, is a genetic disorder caused by mutations in genes, and while being healthy can delay the effects, there is no escaping from it. Your body is held together with connective tissue made up of collagen, which is made up of different proteins that keep itself from falling apart. When there is a defect in one of the proteins, it can have effects all over the body, overly flexible joints that can dislocate easily, overly stretchy skin, and dilation or even rupture of major blood vessels. As a result of these symptoms, your muscles get weaker, you get hurt easily, and injuries don't heal well. Think of a car but its nuts and bolts are loosely screwed in and it wrecks with just a fender bender. People with EDS also experience crippling joint injuries and chronic pain. So why did it take so long for doctors to figure this out? EDS is simply hard to recognize. It manifests itself in many different ways in many different parts of the body. There is no test for it. You are only diagnosed for it if you pass a list of criteria. This makes EDS an underdiagnosed disease. In 2018 alone, their love of geography led them on trips with their family to Mexico, Canada, Iceland, Israel, and Palestine. As much fun this was for Mala, they never forgot to be considerate of others. They helped others by donating to Kiva International. Kiva provides microloans to help entrepreneurs around the world. Mala loved to reinvest their money each time the loans were paid back. Towards the end of 2015, no one believed it, but Mala felt it coming. Realizing their time was running out, they put all their savings into helping entrepreneurs around the world with the ambitious goal that they raise $1 million. Then, in the afternoon on December 10th, they said they needed to lie down for a bit. Shortly after that, Malawi passed away. There were just 15. Mala touched many lives, one of whom was Jeremy Smith. In response to Mala's death, Jeremy wrote a tribute for them on his website. Mala was a delight to be around and always was willing to learn more about creativity and music. Mala's smile, joyful energy, and kindness will be missed, but their passion for music will inspire others to continue their legacy in sharing the gift and joy of music. Thank you, Mala, for the brief yet impactful influence you had on this earth. Mel Goldfinger wrote this, Laura, John, and family. Mala was a marvel of of capability and potentiality. He reminded me of the young Mozart, due to his rapidly developed advanced musical capabilities and intelligence. His life was a life of inquiry, courage, and strength. How could he ever lift his bass trombone if not for providential input? Mala was a man of joy and insight. He touched all of us, and we will never forget him. Sitting beside him as he performed the tuba mirum in Mozart's Requiem Mass, I felt the sun shining with him as he transported all to a better place. Repose and pie. Mon Ami. Rest in peace, my friend. 
Ben Van Dyke also quickly got the word of the news. I e, so sad to hear Mala passed away after a long illness at such a young age, only 15 and full with ideas, talent, and ambition. He wrote this short, spectacular trombone piece at 12. Just amazing. My sincere condolences to his beloved ones. Rest in peace, Mala. Two months later, on February 15th, Barbara Brookshire wrote this poem for Malawi. Dear Malawi Lee MacDonald, who were you really? Were you a fairy tale creature come to life to inspire us all? If that is so, then you certainly did. Were you the reincarnation of some of the greatest musicians of the world, or perhaps an age-old explorer out to review the ever-fascinating world we live in? Were you a benevolent benefactor giving donations to Akiva International to help sustain young in-need musicians? Did you come to Earth to show us that one's life can be so meaningful even though the body is suffering through terrible trials? And did you come to Earth to fill the hearts of all you knew with love and wonder? Yes, dear child, you were all those things, and more. Hi, so today I thought I'd just do a kind of a life update because I I want to I want to remember this kind of period of my life just to kind of document for the future you know I want to be able to look back at this in however many years and you know remember how I felt back now so the first major thing that's going on in my life is that um, I've gone to my first appointment for therapy. So that's for a couple purposes. One, just for general mental health and um, everything like that, and also for um, starting the referral process for HRT. HRT is hormone replacement therapy. I'll put a definition here. Um, so, so I'm really happy about that. I love it so far. It's great and happy to be continuing with that. Uh, number two is I have a trip to Israel coming up in eight days, I think. Dang, that came up fast. Um, yeah, so I leave for Israel in about eight days. Um, so I'm going to be going to Iceland. I have a, a layover in Iceland, um, 20-hour layover, as well as I'll be then going to Tel Aviv, flying into the Tel Aviv airport. Then we're going to stay in, I believe... Ashkelon is the first place, um, and then Haifa 
in Israel, and we're hoping to go into Ramallah, Palestine while we're there too. And the fourth thing I wanted to talk about is is this. It's I wanted to so so I had my original YouTube channel the. I've renamed it several times, but right now I think it's called Malawi McDonald Music. And, um, I'll put a uh, annotation to it somewhere. Um, anyway, and on that channel it was very... I don't want to say professional because it didn't... it wasn't actually very professional, but I thought it was professional and I only put up stuff that I really liked, and it was all trombone focused and everything. But the perfectionism in me kind of drove the fun out of that, and I never thought anything was good enough to actually post. So, um, so I'm excited for this channel, where I just want it to be more, like, laid-back, kind of just me talking about my life, and showing you things in my life, and just, like, more about me. Like, you know, the other one was very professional, and it was my my performance channel. It's where I'd show someone if I was applying for a musical job. But, I don't know. It's nice to have a more, like, laid-back, happy channel. So, yeah, I'm really excited in general, and, um, I want to thank you, all zero of you, <laughs> right now, um, who are coming along on this journey with me, and, um, following along with my life, and are interested enough in seeing who I am. So thank you for watching. Um, feel free to like it, this video, if you did. Probably didn't, in which case there is a dislike button. Um, feel free to subscribe for maybe more. I can't... See, part of this channel and part of why I'm so happy about it is I don't have to have a schedule or anything. I can just upload whatever I want. So go ahead and feel free to subscribe. Can't guarantee there will be any videos at any certain time or on any certain topic, but I'll try, and um, we'll see what happens. So, thank you for coming along on this journey, and I will see you later. Goodbye.